What will protect your life against bitterness and envy and jealousy and hardness of heart is just a spirit of thanksgiving. And we see this clearly outlined in the book of Philippians. So Paul is writing to the church of Philippi. And by the way, Paul is literally in prison while he's writing this, first of all. So he's in prison. Life is not going great, quote unquote, for him. But while he's in prison, he writes this letter to the church of Philippi, and he's basically all in chapter one. He's encouraging them. He's edifying them. He's saying, hey, I'm praying for you. I'm thankful for you. He says in verse three, I thank my God in all my remembrance of you, always in prayer of mine for you all making my prayer with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. And I, I just love this section of scripture because it's, it's showing that external circumstances that Paul was facing did not dictate his resolution in his faith. And he even goes on to say, hey guys, I would rather die and go be with Jesus, but it's beneficial for you that I stay here. And so because of that, I'm going to stay here. He had like this resolution of just a grit in his spirit. He knew what God called him to do. He knew what he was supposed to do. And so he wasn't just complaining. He wasn't complaining about his status in life. He wasn't saying, oh, why did God put me in prison? Why am I doing this? No, he just had a spirit of thanksgiving. And that's what thanksgiving will do for your life. Uh, you might be in a season right now where there's not a lot to be thankful for, but you always have something that you can thank God for. And I always say, if you don't have, if you can't find anything in your life to be thankful for, then you're not trying hard enough. You're not looking hard enough. And when you start to combat things that are going in your life with the spirit of thanksgiving, it will change your perspective and you'll see your spirit begin to have a little bit more levity and balance and joy to it. And guys, we have too many Christians that are just walking around just like emo Christians that are depressed and all they talk about is how Satan is afflicting them and oh the world sucks and yeah you know it's like why would anybody want to be a part of that why would anybody want to be a part of that type of gospel but you have Paul who's in prison who we know that is facing a lot of hardship and he's like man I just want to encourage you guys you guys are doing great Man, I, I'm so thankful for the work that you're doing, and I'm so thankful for who you are in Christ. And having that ability to look beyond your circumstance will create a spirit in you that has patience, endurance, perseverance, has uh, an ability to weather storms. Because if you really want to do all that God has called you to do, it's going to require that resolution in you. Because in order for God to accomplish something through you, it's going to require you to go through seasons of hardship and struggle. Because the world is opposed to the gospel. Because Satan is opposed to the gospel. So the more that we step forward in that, and the more that we step forward in that calling, the harder it's going to be at times. And so are you... A person that can withstand things that are going on and still have a spirit of thanksgiving in you. Because if you don't, you will turn to bitterness, you will turn to uh, anger, and soon enough, that anger that you feel towards others and yourself will project onto God. And how many times do we see pe believers? How many times do we see people that go to church, that follow, that are all, in all the groups, that tithe, that serve? And all of a sudden, bitterness creeps into their heart, and they slowly drift away from God. They slowly turn their back on God, and it's because they can't, they didn't master having a spirit of thanksgiving. So wherever you're at, you can be thanksgiving. And the second thing I love about this verse, this chapter, okay, is what does Paul say in verse 5? He says in 4 and 5, always in prayer of mine for you all making my prayer with joy because because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. So Paul is talking to the church of Philippians and he's like, guys, we are, we're together. We're in this together. I thank God for you. I'm praying for you. Why? Because of our partnership in the gospel. And I think this is an area, if I'm going to be brutally honest, that a lot of the modern day church has lost. We got Christians bashing other Christians. We got Christians, you know, just hate, hating on other churches and all of this. And I'm not, and I'm saying, 
Paul recognized that, hey, we have unity because of our partnership in the gospel. And so often our war as Christians are with other believers and it doesn't make any sense. Like I get it if somebody's preaching heresy, true heresy, not this, oh, I think I don't like what they're saying, so it's heresy. No. If they're tr- preaching biblical heresy, if they're preaching all of these things, then yes, we should speak up about, about this. But we have so many believers that with open-handed issues disagree. And because of that, we create drama and we create strife and we create friction with, with the church. And I, I always like to think, you know, well, I, I went to a soccer game and uh, it was my nephew's soccer game and he's um, six now. And they're not good. You know, they're not good at soccer players and they're playing bumblebee soccer. Wherever the ball is, everybody goes to it. And you have players stealing from players and nobody knows what team they're on. And it's just a giant mess. And, you know, I think that sometimes can be the picture of what the world is looking at Christians as. Like, why would I want to be a Christian if I'm looking at these guys who apparently are two Christians and they're just tearing each other apart? And they don't like each other. And they're publicly calling out and shaming and doing all these things. We have to realize that we have a partnership in the gospel. And because of that, we have unity with believers. You're not going to always agree with somebody else and what they think about the gospel. There are a lot in this, guys. There's a lot in this book. There are some non-negotiables. Okay, There are non-negotiables that we we should all agree on. But there's a, a lot of things in that book that somebody might disagree with you on. You want me to name a few? Uh, people disagree about women in ministry. People disagree about whether a Christian can be demon-possessed in deliverance. People disagree about money in the Bible. People disagree about Jesus uh, and the way, the reason that he did some things and the reason that he didn't do other things. People disagree about a lot because maybe there's a mystery of God that we're not going to fully uh, uncover until we we die and we're with him and we fully understand it or not fully understand it but understand it more so the point i'm trying to make is paul recognized that guys our partnership was with the gospel hey your partnership with christians isn't with their personality isn't with what no your partnership is based on the foundation of the gospel and the gospel preaches love and truth and, and patience and unity and so if we are to really be the hands and feet of jesus if we're really to be the church that that shows a light that spreads evangelism to the world that that really uh is attractive and people want to be a part of it we gotta stop just like ripping each other apart all the time like we gotta stop this unnecessary arguing and it's just like not attractive at all so so people in your church people in your life that are christians that maybe you don't agree with maybe you don't get along with like just understand there is a deeper more important base level foundation of your biblical christianity and that's most important to create that unity so how do you how do you battle against all of uh, bitterness and how do you battle against envy and strife you keep a spirit of thanksgiving and you understand that at the end of the day our partnership with other people are in christ now it, it, i did a free webinar if you guys want to know how i study the bible and the tool that i use and i'll link it right here we're going through philippians we just went through all of john so you can go check that out um but we're going through philippians and then we'll go to the next book but let me know what your favorite part about the series has been so far and we'll see you next time